Eric Musfeld. The Auschwitz trials were a series of trials that began on the 24th of November 1947 in Krakow. It was when Polish authorities tried 40 former staff members of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Trials came to an end on the 22nd of December in 1947. Some of the most well-known defendants were Arthur Lieberhenschel, former commandant, Maria Mandel, head of the Auschwitz women's camps, and SS doctor Johann Kremer. The Supreme National Tribunal, presiding in Krakow, ultimately issued 23 death sentences and 17 imprisonments. These ranged from life sentences to as little as three years. All executions were then carried out on the 28th of January in 1948 at the Krakow Montelupic prison. In total, there were 38 other SS officers. This group was composed of 34 men and four women. They had served as guards or doctors in the camps and so were also tried. One of the many people put on trial was Erich Musfeld. Musfeld was born on the 18th of February in 1913. Not much is known about his early life, but he was reportedly married with one son at the time of his service in the SS Totenkopfverbande, which was the organization responsible for administering and organizing the Nazi concentration camps. The fate of his wife is unknown. There are rumors that she was killed in an air raid and his son sent to the Russian front. The SSTV, which was the nickname for the Totenkopfverbande, were originally created in the year 1933. They were an independent unit within the SS that had its own command structure. It ran the camps throughout Germany and later in the war in occupied Europe. Camps in Germany were many and included Dachau, Bergen-Belsen and Buchenwald. Camps outside Germany included Auschwitz in German-occupied Poland and Mutausen in Austria. There were numerous other concentration camps as well as death camps that were handled with the utmost of secrecy. The extermination camp's function was genocide and they were built to carry out the Nazi ideology of the final solution. This was the official code name for the murder of all Jews and anyone otherwise deemed unacceptable by the Nazis and was not restricted to the European continent. Originally, Muschfeld served at Auschwitz in the year 1940. He was transferred to the work and extermination camp at Majenek on the 15th of November in the year 1941. He was involved in the final mass shooting of the camp's remaining inmates known as the Operation Harvest Festival. The mass shooting action, which was initiated by the SS and was conducted at the Maginek concentration camp and its sub-camps, was initiated in order to liquidate all the remaining Polish Jews in the Lublin district and the Lublin ghetto. This included its entire slave labor camp workforce, who were deemed unnecessary. The operation took place on the 3rd of November in 1943. Approximately 43,000 Jews were killed by the orders of Christian Wirth. Operation Harvest Festival was the single largest German massacre of Jews in the entire war and will forever go down in history as an unnecessary tragedy. Eventually, it was exceeded only by the 1941 Odessa massacre of more than 50,000 Jews in October 1941, which was carried out by the Romanian troops. During the massacre at Majinek, Jews were first separated from other prisoners. After that, they were then taken in groups to long and deep trenches and brutally shot one by one under the leadership of Erich Muschfeld. Meanwhile, at the main camp, around 18,400 Jews were killed in November. Jews from surrounding slave labor camps in the Lublin area were also taken to Majinek and shot simultaneously. Music was played through loudspeakers at both Majinek and Travniki to drown out the noise of the mass shooting so as not to disturb the officers and camp officials. The entire killing operation was completed in a single day at both Majinek and Travniki. At Poniatowa camp, the shootings took two days because in one of the barracks the Jews staged a revolt in order to subdue it, the SS set it on fire and subsequently the killings went on as planned. When, later on, the Majinek camp was liquidated, Erich transferred back to Auschwitz. While there, he served as supervising SS officer of the Jewish Sonderkommando. The Sonderkommandos were the work units of the Nazi death camps. Death camp prisoners, which were composed almost entirely of Jews, were forced to help with the disposal of gas chamber victims during the Holocaust. Sonderkommander members did not participate directly in killing. That responsibility, which was considered an honor, was reserved for the guards. It was the Sonderkommando's primary responsibility to get rid of the corpses. They were forced into the position, and in most cases they were inducted immediately when they arrived at the camp and were never given any advance notice of the tasks they would have to carry out. Noted as being committed to being brutal, Muschfeld had an unusual relationship at Auschwitz with the renowned Jewish-Hungarian pathologist Dr. Miklos Nisli. Pathologists were forced to carry out autopsies on behalf of the infamous Dr. Joseph Mengele. 
If there was a single person who embodied the archetype of evil that was Auschwitz, it is surely Dr. Joseph Mengele. Nicknamed by the inmates and survivors of the camp as the Angel of Death, the doctor would casually select those permitted to live and work and those destined to die in the gas chambers. Among those he selected to live were the subjects upon whom he conducted his infamous race-inspired medical experiments that were essentially synonymous with torture. Mengele injected thousands of inmates with everything from petrol to chloroform in order to study the chemical's effects. Among other atrocities, he did such things as plucking out the eyes of corpses to study eye pigmentation and conducted numerous horrific studies on twins. Dr. Niersley survived the war and later testified about the atrocities that took place at Auschwitz. Dr. Niersley even described one incident when Muschfeld came to him for a routine checkup, completely unfazed, after shooting 80 prisoners in the back of the head prior to their cremation. Dr. Niersley noted that Muschfeld's blood pressure was high and asked as to whether this could be related to the recent influx of prisoners. Muschfeld apparently replied angrily that it made no difference to him whether he shot one person or 80. If his blood pressure was too high, it was because he drank too much alcohol, he said. Murder had no effect on him. It was his duty. Nisley also described an incredibly rare occurrence in which a young 16-year-old girl managed to survive the gas chamber, and due to highly unusual circumstances, she was recovering from the ordeal with medical help from Nisley and others after she was discovered alive. Nisley took up her case with Muschfeld and asked that her life be spared. Nisley reported that he listened attentively and asked precisely what the pathologist proposed doing. When Nisley asked again that the girl remain alive, Muschfeld replied, there's no way of getting round it. The child will have to go. Nisley explained that half an hour later, the young girl was led, or rather carried, into the furnace room hallway, and there she was given a bullet in the back of the neck. Once the war came to an end, Muschfeld was arrested by US military officials. He was tried for committing atrocities in the Flossenburg concentration camp by an American military court, Witnesses came out and testified, saying that they saw Muschfeld beat and shoot multiple prisoners, as well as all the other heinous acts he committed. By January 1947, Muschfeld was eventually found guilty and given a life sentence. However, he was then extradited to Poland, where he was retried in Krakow in November 1947, this time for crimes committed in Auschwitz. He was tried by the Supreme National Tribunal, which was a war crime tribunal that was active throughout communist-era Poland from the years 1946 to 1948. The tribunal presided over seven high-profile cases involving a total of 49 individuals in December 1947. The 1943 Moscow Declaration stated that Germans found guilty of war crimes would be sent back to the countries where they had committed their crimes so they could be judged on the spot by the peoples whom they have outraged. Poland was a country that suffered heavily due to Nazi atrocities and they identified over 12,000 criminals that they requested be extradited. And so eventually about 2,000 German criminals were extradited to Poland. Among them was Musfeld, who was found guilty of crimes against humanity and sentenced to death. He was executed by hanging on the 28th of January in 1948. He is gone, but his cruel deeds will never be forgotten. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button so you can enjoy more walks through history.